Thank you for coming to this uh, video part, uh, linked to the article that we've just had published in uh, PLOS Computational Biology. My name is David Holloway. I'm at the British Columbia Institute of Technology in Burnaby, BC, Canada. And I've done this work with uh, um, Francisco Lopez, Luciano de Fontoro Costa, Bruno Chavansolo in Brazil, uh, Nina Goliandina and Konstantin Usevic in St. Petersburg, and my collaborator Alexander Spiroff at Stony Brook in New York uh, in the U.S. So what we've been interested in in this uh, this paper, and this is just a chance to give you an overview of our main results here, is how expression noise and gene transcription and translation can affect spatial patterning in early embryonic development. So we've used one of the really uh, classic cases in developmental biology, the early patterning in the, in the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster. So one of the, the classic pairs that's studied is the uh, bicoid protein that's laid down in an exponential gradient down the anterior to posterior length of the, the fruit fly from anterior to posterior. And it's this green, green line uh, over on the right. So this gradient provides positional information for where cells uh, further on in development uh, differentiate into, into different types. And one of the early transcriptional targets of bicoid, which is a transcriptional regulator, is the hunchback protein, uh, a gap gene that's turned on in the, in the embryo and forms this characteristic boundary at mid-embryo. Um, and this, this is shown over in, in blue here, the concentration of hunchback as you go from the anterior to posterior end of the embryo. So it's, this has been a real uh, classic case in recent years for, for studying the uh, transfer of positional information from, from the mother to the uh, embryo and also for understanding the variability in this. So there have been a number of landmark studies in, in recent years looking at the variability between embryos uh, uh, from bicoid compared to the embryo variability for hunchback. What we're interested in focusing on is what's within a single embryo, what's the, the noise that can develop between nuclei, what's the noise that can develop just in the machinery of uh, turning on the hunchback gene um, for making a, a pattern and what are mechanisms uh, within, the, uh, within that chemical machinery that can limit that type of noise so that you have reproducible embryonic patterns and reproducible embryos. So the hunchback promoter is um, upstream of the, uh, the start site for hunchback transcription. Um, there's a core promoter region, proximal promoter, which has um, six known uh, bicoid binding sites that have been known for quite a while and uh, two hunchback self-regulatory sites. So the hunchback protein actually binds back on itself and there's a, a self-regulatory feedback cycle here. We've, uh, you can make constructs in the lab which have, these, uh, have this region between the uh, green arrows and will form the, uh, the characteristic anterior uh, step pattern uh, expression of uh, a hunchback-like uh, expression pattern. So we use this, uh, this anterior region, about 1,500 base pairs, as the basis of our model. And that's what's shown, shown here in B, is the, just the binding on and off of the bicoid transcriptional regulators, of the hunchback um, uh, regulators, and the uh, transcription uh, from the bound state um, to producing hunchback RNA and translation of the RNA into the protein. So as well, the uh, bicoid uh, regulate uh, proteins and hunchback proteins are diffusing uh, between nuclei and um, they're also decaying. The RNAs and the uh, proteins have decay rates. So that's all captured in our, our model down here. And we model this stochastically so that there's a probability for any of these interactions happening in a, in a given time period. So our results, so these are um, model simulations on the, on the top and experiments that we've done on the, uh, in the middle here. So for normal wild type noise, where we're modeling these six bicoid sites and two hunchback sites, uh, our first conclusion is that RNA has relatively more noise than the, than the protein. And this is something that we see in the data. If we look at a, a single embryo here, the RNA is much noisier than the, than the protein. So the translation tends to amplify the signal. Um, we we're, we're, uh, have protein signal that we're assuming in the model is about 30 times uh, stronger than the RNA uh, concentration, and it also smooths out, the, smooths out the noise. We can also predict from the model that uh, some of the things that go into this uh, smoother protein expression 
are the uh, the speed of these reactions. So if we speed up the reactions, we have more noise. And in fact, the um, higher level uh, protein concentration that you're seeing is mirroring more of the noise of the uh, binding on and off at the uh, DNA level of the hunchback promoter. So one of the factors that, that we think is affecting uh, the relatively smooth wild type expression is that it um, has relatively slow, uh, slow reactions and, and long half-lives with the protein and RNA. We can also see that um, this is 19 different uh, computations. And if you overlay these, it's like simulating what the variability you would see between embryos. And we can see some positional variability just generated by this intrinsic gene expression noise. So we're postulating that this can contribute some to the, the type of positional errors that people are seeing when they compare between embryos. We can also um, look at the effect that those hunch, hunchback self-regulatory sites, that self-regulatory feedback cycle has on, on noise expression. So if you look at um, in an actual embryo um, with a, a mutant, this hunchback 14F, which does not bind DNA, the, the protein it produces um, does not have a DNA binding sequence, and so there's no self-regulation in this mutant, um, then we do see that the, that the protein becomes noisier than wild type. And if we look at the simulations, both RNA and, and protein are, are much noisier without these self-regulation sites in them. We can also see with the, with the model, by modeling the, the transcriptional dynamics, that transcription and translation create new types of noise. So bicoid noise, this is uh, what we have plotted here is the variance to mean ratio. Um, and for a Poisson distributed noise, um, the variance to mean ratio is one. And so that's what we see with bicoid, is that it, the variance to mean ratio down the whole length of the embryo is, is one, and it's Poisson distributed noise. As we look at the hunchback RNA, especially in this anterior region, it's two or three times what you'd expect from a Poisson distribution. So the transcriptional reactions are increasing the, uh, the variance to mean in hunchback RNA. And then as you look at translation, we have about 15-fold increase from what you'd expect from a Poisson distribution. So what we're seeing is that transcription and translation uh, change the character of the noise. And really, the hunchback output noise cannot be interpreted in terms of the bicoid input noise. There are different types. We can also model a, a number of uh, constructs that were uh, made um, with LAG-Z Reporter um, using different parts of the hunchback promoter um, by Drever in the late 80s. Um, and these were constructs in which uh, LAG-Z uh, expression is driven by um, a single bicoid site, this 1A, and then he could increase the number of bicoid binding sites that are in this, in this um, expression promoter. And um, as you increase the number of binding sites, the relative noise goes down. So this is going uh, down. The, these are one strong bicoid site, four, uh, three strong bicoid sites, four strong bicoid sites. And if you have uh, three sites, and there's no self-regulation in this either. So this is just the effect of bicoid. Um, as you go for, from three weak sites for bicoid to three strong sites, then you also see a decrease in, in relative noise. So our conclusions here is that this might be some basal um, mechanism that other flies also see because they have multiple bicoid sites. Uh, having multiple bicoid sites and uh, increasing the strength of these bindings can give some sort of basal uh, buffering against, against noise. But in, in Drosophila melanogaster, then what we're seeing is that, um, that really the self-regulation is one of the major um, effects for decreasing the, the noise. And we can directly see this with the, the Hunchback 14F mutant data. So the overall uh, result from this paper is that um, the transcriptional and translational uh, reactions in Hunchback expression uh, create a unique type of noise, that hunchback noise is not directly dependent on bicoid, that this self-regulation that hunchback uh, shows um, is a method for it to decrease noise, and that there's this sort of basal mechanism for uh, where you can increase the number of bicoid binding sites, um, which we postulate does, does affect the noise. So thanks for your attention here, and I'd encourage you to go read further on the details in the article itself in PLOS Computational Biology. Thank you.